When starting a project, Revit begins by giving us default plan views. Sometimes, additional plan views are necessary for various reasons. To create a new plan view, open the Plan View tool in the View tab. We are now given four options for creating different types of views. We will start by opening the Floor Plan tool. Notice that there are no available floor plan views to create. That's because all of the levels already have an associated floor plan. Uncheck the Do Not Duplicate Existing Views option to allow the creation of multiple plan views of the same level. Next, let's select the floor that we would like to create a plan view for. We also have the option to choose the scale now before the view is created. We can now select OK to create our new view. Our new view will appear in the project browser. Let's rename it First Floor 2. After opening the Plan View tool, we can also create a reflected ceiling plan. Once again, we must uncheck the Do Not Duplicate Existing Views option. Select the desired level, choose a scale, and select OK to create the new view. We can now rename our new ceiling plan, First Floor 2. Again, using the Plan View tool, we can create a plan region, which is like setting a plan view within a plan view. Opening this tool allows us to create a sketch of our plan view region. Once the sketch is complete, we have a section of our plan view that can be modified independently of the rest of our view. Finally, after opening the plan view tool, we can create area plans. These plans are used to get an idea of the square footage of a structure. The area of the structure can be calculated in two ways. Gross building calculates the total constructed area of a building, which is any area inside the outer face of the building's exterior walls. Rentable area uses a more detailed measuring scheme based on the building owners and managers association. To make an area plan, select a floor, choose a scale, and select OK. Revit will now ask to automatically create boundary lines. Select Yes. We have now created an area plan, and Revit uses purple lines to outline the enclosed areas of the structure. This view can also be found in the project browser. Under the Home tab, we can place tags in our view that tell us the square footage of each area. Open the Area Tag tool and select Yes to load in a new tag type. Once we have a tag type, move the cursor to the middle of an outlined area and place a tag in order to label the square footage contained in that area. Another way to create new plan views is to duplicate existing ones. Notice the dimensions added to the first floor plan view. To begin creating a new plan view, let's right click the plan view that we want to duplicate. We are now presented with three duplicate view options. Start by selecting Duplicate. Notice that the new view does not include the dimensions. Right click on the original floor plan and this time choose Duplicate with Detailing. Now notice that the dimensions from the original view were carried over to our new floor plan view. Finally, let's choose Duplicate as Dependent. This creates a view that is filed in the project browser within another view. This way of duplicating can often help with organizing your project. Once a view has been created, we can select what and how things appear in a plan view. Let's rename one of our duplicate views First Floor Furniture. In the View tab, open the Visibility Graphics tool. In this menu, we can change how elements are displayed based on their category. We can hide elements, change the appearance of their lines, half-tone them, or make them transparent. To emphasize the furniture in our view, let's half-tone the stairs, rails, walls, and doors. Next, let's hide specialty equipment, like the elevators.
Also, let's make the furniture lines red and thicker by overriding the current settings. Finally, let's hide the dimensions that are visible in this view. When finished, we can select OK to apply these changes. It is often helpful to create plan views focusing on specific areas of a model. Once plan views have been created, we can edit what we see and how we see it. Let's start by editing one of our first floor plan views. First, we will select the Show Crop Region option, which is available in the View Properties or on the View Control Bar. To edit the crop region, click on it and move the boundaries. Once the boundaries are set, we can now hide the crop region if we'd like. We can also select whether we'd like to show the cropped view or not. Once we are done editing the crop region of a view, we will notice that the views at the same level are not affected. In the View Properties, select the View Range option. We can change the top or bottom locations of our range or the cut plane of our view. Let's try raising the cut plane to 7 feet. Notice that the doors in our model disappear because their openings are below the cut plane. Let's return our cut plane back to 4 feet. Instead of changing the cut plane for the whole view, we can create a plan region instead. Open the Plan Views tool and select Plan Region. Sketch the area of the view that we would like to edit. When we have finished the sketch, we can now edit the view range of that region. Once again, try moving the cut plane to 7 feet. Now, we have assigned this area a new cut plane, while the rest of the view maintains its original settings. In the View Properties, change the Underlay option from None to Second Floor. Now, the Second Floor Plan View is visible in the First Floor Plan View. This can be done for any level. After opening the Second Floor Plan View, we can underlay the First Floor. This feature is helpful because it allows us to select objects that are located on another level or use them as reference points. We can change the scale of a plan view which reflects how the plan will be printed. Notice the dimensions on our first floor plan view. Now try changing the scale to 1 inch equals 1 foot. This would result in a larger print and the font of the annotations becomes very small compared to the size of the drawing. Now let's try changing the scale to 1 16th of an inch equals 1 foot. This would result in a smaller print and the font of the annotations would overpower the size of the drawings. Select a good scale appropriate for our model. 
Let's return to the scale 1 quarter inch equals 1 foot. In the plan view, we can also change its level of detail. Our options range from fine to coarse. Select fine and notice the level of detail, especially in our elevator component. Switching back to coarse, we lose a lot of detail and Revit displays a more generic representation of our model.